performance of technology in healthcare, what are global trends? Um, innovation is not an objective, but what is? Uh, where is innovation most needed? And how can it impact uh, innovation on city market? So first of all, we need technology to promote safety and quality of care. When a caregiver has the correct information uh, of a patient, there's a better chance that the patient will be treated adequately and right, uh, with the right uh, precautions. Uh, to be able to invest in better quality of care, data is needed because data is knowledge. Uh, the systematic collection of information on diseases, care demand, makes it possible to predict health issues and act proactive and preventive. Not only health information is uh, important because part of our, our health is also determined by social determinants, determinants of health, like the environment that we live in, the traffic, and the food that we consume. We also need technology uh, to reduce the fragmentation in healthcare. Nowadays, care is more organized around the patient. The use of electronic communication between healthcare providers ensures that we don't longer need to uh, depend on the information that is provided by the patient itself. Also, for cost efficiency, uh, technology will minimize the waste uh, by, uh, by preventing duplicate pre uh, prescriptions and diagnostic requests. It happens too often that something is prescribed or requested that has already been prescribed by another healthcare provider but we're not aware of. With even greater potential of saving avoidable complications such as heart attacks and strokes is because we have the data so we can prevent it and uh, look for those uh, implications. Um, what we also have is what we're seeing is that we're dealing with an aging population that's increasing. And at the same time, we also see that healthcare professionals are becoming scarce. So technology can help us assist by automating tests and workflows, bridging the gap caused uh, in the workforce shortage. So technology in healthcare offers new opportunities for medical personnel and patients uh, to live in a more sustainable environment and confer previously incurable diseases. But what do we need? What are the trends currently in healthcare? And what possibilities do they offer? So it starts with connectivity. That serves as a cornerstone. Without that, uh, technology, technolo technological uh, innovations are not possible. These innovations can be categorized in several areas. We have technology that is focusing on um, telehealth, on, uh, on patient engagement, such as telehealth, uh, virtual reality. We also have um, uh, innovations that are focused on uh, monitoring of patients, like Internet of Medical Things that merges medical devices and mobile applications, allowing us to uh, monitor the patient's health. We have advanced diagnostics, enabling uh, more accurate and early disease detection. We have robotics um, that can be used in the process of rehabilitation, while 3D, 3D printing helps us with, for instance, customized prosthetics. Last but not least, we also have artificial intelligence, what is really upcoming. It empowers computers to think like humans. AI is expected to transform the healthcare industry by completing tasks currently done by uh, humans with greater speed and accuracy uh, with fewer resources. In the next slides, I will discuss a number of these in innovations more into depth. As I just mentioned, um, connectivity serves as a cornerstone. 5G is the future for healthcare. Compared with 4G, 5G can achieve much more speech, speed while having more connections at the same time. Um, it, will and it is and it will be valuable in many areas of healthcare, like telehealth, remote surgery, 
transferring large medical files, and tracking patient movements. What we also need for the connectivity is information systems for health. Um, those are the leading way in healthcare technology, acting as a centralized database where everyone stores their data, but also shares the data. Those systems should not only be related to care related systems, but all systems with data related to the health, like also social determinants, should be linked to those kind of systems so we have a complete picture of patients. Here are two examples of technology tech trends regarding patient engagement. Um, on the left side, you see telehealth. You see a patient having conversations with the healthcare provider through a um, tablet. Telehealth offers more convenient ways for patients to access care by potentially reducing office visits and travel time. This convenient model has the potential to increase self-care and prevent complications and ER visits. On the right side, you see the use of virtual reality. Virtual reality can engage patients in a simulating sensory experience that can accelerate behavior change in ways that are safer, more convenient, and more accessible. For example, VR can assist in uh, addressing mental health issues like anxieties and phobias by immersing patients in an environment that helps them overcome their fears uh, in a controlled setting. Research has also shown the impact of PR when treating alcohol addiction and changing behaviors uh, to improve wellness, such as weight loss, uh, but also smoking uh, sensation. Then we move on to continuous monitoring. Remote monitoring is becoming an indispensable tool in patient care. It enables monitoring of patient's health data, which is transmitted to the healthcare provider. So on the left side, you see a smart lens, eliminating the need of the fingerprint blood test. South Korean researchers, researchers have developed a transparent lens with a flexible electronics measuring glucose levels. But if we look even closer to home, we also have the flash glucose monitoring. Uh, where patients have a badge on their arm and their mobile phone, they can also receive the data. So it's not as far as we think. Um, we also have, or what you also can see, is like, for instance, wearing a, um, a badge that is like smaller than a poster stem and that is monitoring your heartbeat. It's using ultra-electronic waves, uh, measuring the blood pressure, blood pressure deep within the body, feeding the data to the laptop. These innovations are reshaping healthcare, offering non-constructive, inefficient way to monitoring vital signs. We also use technology for early and better diagnosis of cancer. So the majority of the patient-doctor interaction they don't really require hands-on or physical exam. Care is more and more delivered in a blended way where real world is mixed with virtual world model. Patient vital signs will be obtained and shared with the physician via web integrated devices. For instance, a specialist can, for example, use a, sem uh, a selfie that you've sent from a skin spot and tell you either to come in to let it check or to rest and just stay easy. On the slide on the left, you see, for instance, a person using a smartphone app that helps to diagnose uh, pancreatic cancer by checking the whites in the eyes for signs of illness. Another development that researchers by the Cleveland uh, Clinic have developed is a new blood test. Uh, that predicts prosthetic cancer um, to do that more accurate than we have currently. This would dramatically change the need for biopsy and treatment uh, of cases unlike to be um, result in death. Artificial intelligence is um, also 
transforming the way how medical professional, professionals make their decisions. For instance, it's enhancing the precision and the scope of diagnostics. Traditional cancer diagnosis methods, such as biopsy, are often limited. Now, with AI-powered wall-side imaging, pathologists can examine extensive tissue areas, which is critical for understanding diseases like cancer. This picture shows on the left side a sample of tissue. On the right side, you see how AI produced an analysis, showing normal tissues in gray and two forms of cancer in red and blue. So advancements in technology are also enabling innovative solutions for various mobility challenges. Robotic devices are providing crucial support um, for individuals dealing with severe mobility issues, such as partial uh, paralysis. These devices are programmed to guide patients through movements uh, by facilitating them with motions they, that can contribute to rebuilding their structure and their strength. We also see that in many parts of the world, empathies lack access to prosthetics. Mobile phones and 3D printing may offer a solution in that field. Albert, shown on the picture on the left and the right, is a national geographic explorer who lost his part of his legs in 2016. Phone cameras could scan residual limbs, providing measurements to professionals with 3D printers to create a matching low-cost casket socket. So nice, but how can and will it impact our health at home? It's great to benefit from all these technological progress, but it's just as important as to spread it. Spread it. In low and middle income countries, people die because they don't have access to healthcare, or they die because they got poor quality of care. So how can and will technology impact our health at home? So our focus in healthcare is on the tip of the iceberg. With the growing healthcare expenditures and the increasing demand for high quality care, the pressure on the healthcare system is increasing. Almost 80% of our budget is spent to the 20% most expensive patients. More than 50% is spent on the top 5%. And these costs cannot be saved anymore. They have already been made, and two-thirds of this group is next year not alive anymore, or as expensive once we have that data. So we are actually focusing when things are already have gone wrong. So the real problem is actually under the surface. So we should look to the people that look seemingly healthy by paying attention to the hidden problems that they might have to prevent escalation to the top 20%. So prevention is better and cheaper than occurring diseases and complications. So what exactly is health? The definition for health has remained the same for the last 70 years. The World Health Organization defined health as a state of complete physical, mental, social and well-being and not merely the absence of diseases uh, or infirmity. What we aim for is that everyone has equal uh, opportunities to be healthy. So this also includes the social determinant of health. But in practice, that translates to everyone has equal access to healthcare. So are you insured or are you not insured? And this is perceived by people as having the right to all health care at minimum cost. So what is covered or what is not covered? And thus our goal is actually not achieved. So what determines health? So 60% is determined by social determinants of health, 20% by genetics, and actually only 20% by health care. 
So everyone receives the same health care, but actually our needs vary. So in this, in this picture, what you see is different people from different backgrounds. Um, a male has different needs than a female. The same is for when you're obese or when you're thin or the neighborhood that you grew up, which might be dangerous or might be in a safe neighborhood or your ethnic background. So when we look at universal access and universal coverage, we see everyone is the same. So we all have the same insurance plan, we have the same standards, we get the same number of treatments, so it's a one-size-fits-all healthcare. And that doesn't start earlier than when you become sick. So that is something that we want to change and move more towards individualized healthcare where everyone gets the uh, uh, healthcare that fits his own needs. So where are innovations most needed? So when we look back at the iceberg, uh, we can distinguish different layers. The top of the layer are the people that are seriously ill. Currently, when we look at that, the, the focus is like intensive care, uh, where we should move more towards uh, case management. Then when we under the iceberg, the, under the surface, we have the seemingly healthy people that when we look at the children, the babies from 0 to 12, they are monitored by collective prevention. But after that, they are not on the radar anymore. We don't know what is happening till they become sick. So we want to move more towards a light um, course approach where we keep track of those people even though they are not sick. So once someone is sick right now, they pop up in the system again. And what we see there is that there is a lack of collaboration between and with the healthcare providers. So there we want to move more towards a patient-focused healthcare. And then we have the chronically ill people. Those, we or what we do, we implement a one-size-fits-all uh, care. And that's where we want to go towards the integral care, where we guide them based on an individual care plan. So looking back at all the innovations that I just discussed, some of the innovations are more focused under the, sur under the surface. So we have the telehealth, um, the artificial intelligence, the medical things of uh, internet of medical things that can be applied really easily. Then we also have innovations that focus more on the top of the iceberg for people that are already seriously ill, like the 3D printing or the robotics. But innovation, it doesn't make sense uh, when it's not integrated around the individual. The current health system is fragmented. Care professionals and institutions often work in silos. Patients themselves find, that, find themselves moving through a chain from one to the other healthcare provider. While each healthcare provider maintains their own record about his patients, um, the information that they are gathering is not flowing through the chain as well. So fragmentation can and it will affect access to the service, the quality of care, uh, but also the satisfaction uh, from the patient. So therefore, we want to switch from a, a fragmented healthcare to a network healthcare. And network healthcare aims to enable patients to move more seamlessly within a network uh, of healthcare providers. This is achieved by organizing care around the patients, involving them in the process as well. So this network extends um, beyond just the medical professions. It also includes wellness coaches, uh, life coaches, the family, and public health entities. And within that system, everyone collaborates to the well health and well-being of the patient. So to facilitate this seamless collaboration uh, of the information system, there is also a need of an ICT platform that becomes indispensable to share all the information and data received. 
So to summarize, the healthcare system should shift from a supply version, model disciplinary, one size fits all, reactive healthcare system, to a healthcare system that is demand driven, multidisciplinary, personalized, and proactive, and in which healthcare providers collaborate with a network. So, how do we achieve this impact, or how can we use these innovations on St. Martin? So to determine that, we need to prioritize the impact. So what is the impact and what is the reach of that? So we can do that by uh, identifying the innovations on like what, is that, what does have a high impact for a few people. Like for instance, 3D printing, there are not a lot of people that need that. But there are also innovations that have a low impact but are there for a lot of people, like 5G. Then there are innovations that have an impact for many people, like artificial intelligence. So what is the way forward? So despite the awareness of the potential gain of IT, the healthcare se sector has been slow in implementing and adopting ICT, partly due to the complexity and the high costs related to this. This also applies to the Caribbean countries. The lack of implementation on the other side can also be an advantage because we have the so-called green field. So we can start more or less from scratch and take into, into account the lessons learned from other countries. So first of all, it's important to have a national strategy with each other. Mm -hmm. A strategy or vision in which we are setting the goals um, in, the actions that are needed, needed and the allocation of resources. Establishing a national um, strategy is not simple because you have to involve all the stakeholders like we're doing now. All decisions that are made are um, should fit within that strategy. We also need to look at the policy because the policy needs to remove certain barriers like the technology, uh, the technology, the illiteracy, uh, lack of financing, how are we going to deal with that, how are we dealing with unregistered people. On the other side, it should also um, give us enablers, like funding, um, innovation networks, and it should stimulate public-private uh, partnerships. One of the other things that we need to look at is our reimbursement system. That is now focused on treating diseases instead of preventing. So we should make a swift in that. With that, we also need to give people an incentive to work with innovations. So automation is not only about the technology. It's more than that. When we look at it, 80% is, is the process and 20% is growing about the IT itself. People need to use the technology in their individual environment and need to accept that. So, what we further need is the involvement of our stakeholders to implement this technology, to make sure that we have to make sure that they are involved in every way. Um, leaving them out will give us problems further down the road. It needs to be um, able to be part of their own working process because if we don't take that into account, they won't use the technology that we're implementing and giving them. What is also important is to try to keep the infrastructure uh, simple because healthcare on its own is already complex. So the technology should be adequate for exchange and reporting of data. So mitigating the number of health information systems that we're actually using. So to ensure that data is placed and interpreted on, in the right way, uh, we also need to use standards. What we can do, we can look at international standards like the ICBC, we also have the ICD-10 coding or HAL-SAFE. And next to that, it is also important to have a unique 
unique identifier for patients so that we know when we're exchanging data, we're always talking about the same person and that there are not different, uh, that it's not related to a different healthcare uh, patient. And last but not least, the patient is the owner of his or her data. That's why it's important that the patients give uh, permission to use their data. And what we also see is that the notes of care providers make are their own property. So we need to make a distinction between the patient data and the notes of the providers. So this is actually how the future of healthcare looks like. Thank you. <laughs>